Super Mario World's open in Hollywood. Gotta go fast. What up, viewers? What up, what up? Calc Soups here, and today is Friday, February 17th, and that means it's time for a quick recap of the week in video game news. Um, starting off with video games actually launching. Uh, there has been several launches this year already, um, but EA has tried its attempt at, or has made an attempt at making a Monster Hunter game, uh, not officially licensed Monster Hunter game, but a Monster Hunter game like um, called Wild Hearts, and it launched this week. Um, and it's got it's been off to a pretty good start. It's got an 80 Metacritic. Everyone, uh, all the reviews I read said it's you know very similar to the Monster Hunter series and. And it, uh, I don't know that it, it breaks the mold or anything like that, but if, if you're looking for a Monster Hunter-like, um, then look no further than Wild Hearts that launched this week. If you managed to pick it up, let me know what you think of it. Uh, I haven't picked that up yet, and it's probably pretty low on my list, um, but I definitely did enjoy my time with Monster Hunter when I was playing Monster Hunter World with my friends. So uh, that's what I'll be looking for uh, if I eventually pick it up. Moving right along, the PSVR 2 reviews are starting to pile in, um, and uh, I don't think the reviews are very positive on it. Um, the headset is expensive um, at $550, so uh, you already have to have a PS5, which I know that some people are still struggling to find, uh, which leads to a smaller, uh, smaller funnel. Um, there's not a lot of content on the game, although, you know, the... the uh, for Horizon fans, I've seen some pretty positive uh, perspectives on the Horizon Call of the Wild, I think is the VR game that is coming to PSVR 2. Um, so if you're a big Horizon fan, you can pick up that. Um, but other than that, there's a, and I think there's a distinct lack of content because uh, there's no backwards compatibility, which I, it just brings up the fact again that like Sony doesn't care about its catalog um, and they, they like, make all these like they like throw their hands up in the air that like you know microsoft is buying activision which is bad for its own reasons but that the, like that like it's not consumer friendly or something like that when playstation just often doesn't do consumer friendly things like i don't i don't know you know i don't know that it would be that difficult to make all every game that was compatible with psvr1 compatible with psvr2 um, and that would make your library quite big and make the value proposition uh, a little bit better. Um, so I think ultimately what I got from the reviews was just wait for it to come down in price. Uh, I am excited for the upcoming uh, Saints and Sinners 2, uh, but I can't go back and play Saints and Sinners 1 on it. So I, yeah, hopefully they remaster it or something like that so that I can uh, play both Saints and Sinners on uh, the PSVR 2 if I manage to pick it up. Uh, which I'm kind of on the fence now. Maybe I go back and see if um, the index is still a thing and whether or not it works and is purchasable. Um, but I digress, and, and, and now I am moving on. Uh, Dead Island 2, the long-awaited Dead Island sequel, is uh, has gone gold. It has passed gold certification with the first party, so it can now be printed on discs and distributed uh, back in the old days when games were printed on discs. Um, but to celebrate that, the game, uh, there was an email that got blasted out, uh, from the developers and the date moved forward a week, uh, it was going to launch on April 28th and is now launching April 21st. So I'll get my Pele edition, uh, uh, one week earlier. So I, I'm, I'm pretty excited for it. I, I do like, uh, the Dead Island games and, and I am a big fan of, of zombie killing. So, uh, yeah, very much looking forward to Dead Island 2. Uh, a week earlier now, so good job for that. Um, got a pretty cool video game related movie trailer this week, um, and it's not the movie tie-in that you thought it would be. Uh, there is a Tetris movie coming out uh, based uh, on Tetris and what it was like to get it on, uh, get it out there, and how it was invented and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it's a Soviet era spy movie uh, with video games in it so uh, i i'm totally down the the trailer is a banger i'll have a link down below uh you got to check it out for yourself uh and tell me how it is because I, I yeah i'm pretty excited for uh tetris the movie so let me know what you think um big phil has admitted on a uh call this week or in a conversation this week that game pass cannibalizes sales 
oh my god, who would have guessed that giving away day and date games on a relatively cheap uh, subscription service that people can turn on and off at any time uh, would somehow bite into the $70 premium AAA you know, console release game. Um, I always turn back to uh, Gears, Gears of War 5 and how everybody just played it on Game Pass and then probably turned off Game Pass. Um, so yeah, I, I thought it was, it was a pretty big deal that they are now admitting <laughs> that Game Pass cannibalizes sales. Uh, and that maybe some smaller publishers will think twice before making uh, Game Pass deals. Um, but I think a lot of I think a lot of publishers were already weighing the value of whatever money Microsoft is giving them to put that put it on Game Pass versus the sales they'll generate on the platform. Um, but now that they've admitted that, I bet uh, I bet some some things are going to go down. Uh, yeah, I'm just kind of curious uh, how how people react to that. So very much looking forward to. The reaction of the admission that Game Pass cannibalizes sales. In a recent earnings call from Embracer Group, the owner of the Lord of the Rings IP and many other things, um, and, and Gearbox and all the other kind of gaming stuff that they're invested in, um, they said that there was, in the next 24 months, there will be five Lord of the Rings games coming out. Uh, now, it sounds like they're all different in scope. Uh, first came to my head, if I had to name them, uh, the Gollum game, I'm hoping, eventually comes out. Hopefully a lot sooner than the next 24 months. Um, there's the uh, Moria survival game, uh, where you're like digging and making making your own kind of dwarven fortresses. Um, no relation in uh, Moria. And then I had to look up the rest. Uh, so that's what I have in an article, too. I'll have a link down below that'll talk about each of them individually. Um, there's a CRPG coming out, uh, a card-based RPG coming out to mobile by EA. Um, kind of Everyone's kind of speculating that this would be Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes-like. Um, so if you like that, you'll probably like the Lord of the Rings-based one. Uh, but I don't play too many games on mobile. Uh, Weta Workshop is working on their own video game. It's pretty interesting. Uh, they've got plenty of 3D artists, so I doubt uh, you know that portion of it shouldn't be that difficult. Um, and probably a lot of very smart technical people who can work at the work on building it up and Unreal Engine and Unity are free, so they can probably build off that stuff. Um, so pretty excited for that. Um, and then Private Division is also working on one. Uh, this is the same company that brought you Hades. So my immediate thought was, could I see a Hades Lord of the Rings game? And I totally could. So uh, yeah, let me know what you think any of the, what Private Division's video game will be or what Weta Workshop could be making. Uh, curious to hear what your thoughts are down below. Um, E3 is still happening. I think we talked a month ago about how the first parties, Nintendo, Microsoft, and Sony will not be at E3. Um, but the ESA president has confirmed that it is still happening regardless of their presence, uh, which I think Microsoft will like still be in there at the E3 time frame. Um, it just won't actually be on the show floor or as part of the official E3 uh, schedule, I guess. But if they're not like releasing trailers during that week, I, I don't know what they're doing because uh, that's when most eyes are on the games industry. Um, Ubisoft, uh, as part of the same article that I was reading, Ubisoft is also on the fence. Uh, they, they were the ones calling into question. I think they asked the question and, he, and the ESA president answered uh, whether or not it was still happening. It sounds like Ubisoft is a little bit on the fence about it. But uh, I think even without Ubisoft and those three, and three first parties, I think E3 would still be happening um and you know anything anytime they someone might not be at e3 as part of the official e3 show floor and schedule of events uh they'll might be part of summer game fest and jeff Keighley's thing and they might doing their own thing or, or part of netflix week which is like the week before e3 where netflix just talks about gaming and and all their kind of stuff trying to cash in on on e3's time frame netflix get out of here get your own week um no i'm just kidding but uh yeah, I, I'm looking forward to seeing my industry friends uh, in L.A. during the week of E3, regardless of whether or not uh, the first parties or Ubisoft is present. Um, so, yeah, let me know what you think E3 will look like this year down below. Uh, Pokemon plush are usually something to behold, uh, and the one that uh, got announced this week is definitely added to the list. Uh, the big whale Pokemon called Whale Lord 
Um, it has a plush made out of it. I don't even know if you can call it a plush. It's more like a body pillow in that it is five feet long. Uh, I believe it weighs 14 pounds and it'll cost you $420. Um, and uh, as you've seen with a Snorlax, uh, you know, body pillow or any of the other Pokemon body pillows out there, big old, big old Pikachus out there, uh, this is no different. And uh, yeah, so if you're looking to snuggle up with a big old Pokemon uh, or have it as a set piece in a small room, uh, you can you can pick up Whale Lord for four hundred and twenty dollars. Um, saw some pretty cool indie games this week. Uh, some caught my eye, um, and so I just wanted to shine a spotlight on some of the ones that I saw. Um, one of which was The Pale Beyond. It is a survivor simulator, survival simulator. So you're trying to survive certain scenarios, um, and these are all uh, these are all based on actual polar adventures that like happened. Uh, some of which are as recent as like the 1940s and 50s of like people having to go out uh, and survive like harsh winters or, you know, the, the poles of the uh, of our planet. Um, and yeah, it, it just the idea that what choices would I make differently? Gamifying, it seems a little bit, um, I don't know, crass or, or uncouth, but uh but yeah, I, I think it I think it'd be pretty cool to kind of see what kind of decisions you would make in a life or death situation uh, about surviving in the uh, kind of the polar areas of the world. So um, yeah, I'm I'm pretty interested to see uh, what kind of what comes of this. Um, and another game that um, I wanted to cast a light on was uh, Roots of Yggdrasil. Um, it is a post-apocalyptic game, uh, as you can tell by Yggdrasil. It is a uh, is based on Norse mythology. It's about rebuilding the world after Ragnarok, uh, the apocalyptic event in Norse mythology. Um, and it, yeah, it's a city builder. Um, and you're you're on, I guess, your floating island. Um, think very Marvel esque about uh, you know you're on your floating island and kind of building up your city, and then you're gonna have to go out and traverse. Uh, oh God, Alfheim. Which of the Heims is the main one? Uh, Nilfheim. I don't remember which Heim is the. Uh, the one that the Norse Asgard they're from Asgard duh I just think of your Marvel stuff um yeah so like Asgard shattered to pieces let's try and go recollect the pieces to try and build a bigger society I don't know the game had a very compelling uh, uh selling proposition for me so uh, I thought pretty cool but the the trailer I watched didn't have any gameplay so I don't have a true sense of what the game is it's my only kind of criticism from what I was reading about it was I didn't get to see what gameplay is so I don't know how what how I'm kind of building is it a colony sim or is it a city builder or what you know what do I actually have control over it? Um, but art style is really striking. Um, I kind of like the, the Warcraft as cartoony style, so uh, looking forward to seeing more on that game soon. But that's it for this week. Let me know if you feel like forgot anything, and always happy to talk video games on my Discord or down below in the comments. But as always, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this content. If you do, please follow, like, and subscribe to me on YouTube and Twitch so you can see more great content like this. I'll have links down below in the description. Thanks again. I hope you have a super day. I hope you have a super weekend, and I hope you have a super day. Bye!